What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving on into a little RPG called Mecha Jammer. This is an odd game that takes place in kind of like a mutant ooze freak world, mixed with a little bit of cyberpunk on in there, where you are a team of military operatives that have deserted, and now you're trying to make your way back home, effectively. Uh, it's a game where you get to create your own character. It uses a combat system that's kind of like a hybrid between real-time and turn-based. It's very, very difficult to, like, describe. You kind of have to feel it yourself in order to get the idea of what the game is going for. But hopefully the idea comes across in execution while we're playing through the title for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, this game comes out very, very shortly. I think it comes out in December, like the very, very beginnings of December. And so anyways, if after watching this you wanted to add it to your wish list or pass on it, depending on what you see, I have a link for you down below so that you can check that out or not check it out. Totally your prerogative. And then on top of that, you'll find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I frequently play the games that I play here on the channel in longer format so that you can get a better idea if I feel like the 30 minutes that we played just didn't pop enough to get the idea across. Let's start a new game. In the far distant future, Earth and her children wage war across the stars. Militant governments police citizens with a heavy hand and draft anyone who steps out of line to the war machine. In an age where worlds are counted as casualties, this is where the stories of most conscripts begin and end. Fortunately, your story begins with an unexpected turn of events. Why that intro video was like letterboxed so aggressively huh anyways we get to make a character right now i'm gonna swap on over to my face right there and then our name will be bang a blicky there we go i'm gonna be a i'm, I'm always like a shooty character in fallout style games i always like like the pistols and the rifles and whatnot never been like a big melee sledgehammer guy so we've got a bunch of stats over here that we can apply to. I considered uh, skipping over the character creation just so we could get further on into the game. But honestly, it's pretty fast. So we've got Pain Threshold. That's going to increase your life re regeneration, how many life points you have. We've got Quietness. That's all for sneaking and being quiet. We've got Muscle Mass, which is going to determine how much damage you deal with melee weapons and some other things. We've got Grace, which is how fast you recover from any action that you take in combat. So like everything in combat has like the time it takes to execute and the time it takes to recover from it. You can think about it as like if you swing a sword, the swing from the top of your shoulder to the hit is a certain amount of time, but pulling the blade out of the person and back to yourself or swinging it back around to go in for another swing is also like a separate action. The game takes that into account, basically, in the way that it divides things up, but in the nomenclature of the title, it can be a little bit confusing to new players where you're like, okay, so what is recovery time on like a gunshot? Uh, it's basically the amount of time it takes you to line up and correct the, the recoil, you know what I mean, in between fire groups. Uh, we've got perception, that's gonna increase your chance to hit with guns. We've got the Occult, which is your success rolls for social situations and also organics. And then we've got Learning, uh, which effectively allows you to learn other languages and how good you are at repair, chemistry, and hacking. So basically support skills. For right now, I'm going to put one into Pain Threshold because I'd like to have a little bit of extra HP. I'm going to put, like, two into Perception. That sounds pretty good. I think that having, like, one... In learning is not the worst idea. Muscle mass is tempting because it'll make our bag size a little bit bigger. But that'll give us just an extra one life point. That's honestly not that much life points in all honesty. Basically, these dice give you a plus one modifier to any dice roll that uses these as like a supplementary stat. That's really all that you need to know. Uh, but it is modifying our stats over in this left hand panel as well. So what I've really settled on here as far as our skill groupings go is I took one and one-handed edge just in case we have to fight somebody with a knife. Ammo can be limited sometimes in this game. Uh, and then I took two and slug guns so that we actually are pretty good with just projectile like 38 special type guns. 
I don't know what to do with this last dice. We've got two in burglary because there are a lot of doors and things around. I'll probably go with one in repair, though, because we did take that one in learning right there. So I sort of feel like that'll probably assist. Does Grace help out with burglary? Yeah, it does, actually. It helps out with burglary right there. And then the final thing we have to do is we have to choose our character's history. Uh, your birth kit is effectively, like, what health care were you on when you were born? Uh, there's the public option, which is like the cheap version. There's Quentin Genetics, which is like rich people. And then there's natural birth, which I don't think means... I think it means you're like basically an unregistered human being, effectively. Uh, we can go with... Let, let's be highbrow. Let's do that. Which of the following occupations did you have before the age of 20? Let's call it... Data entry? Yeah, that sounds good. Apparently, it's going to lock down my learning, though, if I do that. Okay. Oh, well, actually, it looks like just the healthcare coverage that I chose locked it down. Okay, we'll go with, like, a nurse. Which of the best side effects best matches any condition you developed at this time? We've got Oath to Heal. We've got Hesitate. So, your sworn oath to help someone in need is hard to shake. Give medical supplies to anybody who asks for it. We also can have honor. A life without honor is not a life worth living. You do not deliver stealth attacks even to get an edge on the enemy. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's be honorable. Are you 20 years of age or older? Yes. Which of the following occupations did you hold? We'll say that we were a medical worker, and then I'm going to say that we were drafted into the military. That sounds cool. And so, which of the... Because that's what they said in the opening thing, right? So, we can develop PTSD. Uh, every 10 rounds in combat, we have a chance to run away. Nerve damage right here. Chemical agents on the battlefield sapped the strength of your nerves and left you susceptible to shock. If your limbs get mortal wounds, you'll collapse until medical tension revives you. Or we can get exhaustion. Okay, every 10 rounds to receive a fatigue element. I'm just going to go with the nerve damage, I guess. Uh, and then we'll say no. You can keep this going all the way up to the age of like 40 or 50, and you will get more advantages, but you will also kind of accumulate more wounds that you're going to have to tolerate during your playthrough. And so, let's see here. Your learning is capped at one die, and a cult is capped at two die. Okay. It looks like they've got that reversed, because over here it says max one on a cult, and it says max two on learning. So it looks like they've got a variable swapped right there. Little, little, little buggy boy. But let's get on into the game, shall we? Who's this? It destroys our stores. From the war? Is war grade metal? From the Earthies. Better tell three hand. Two Earthies for the pits. Strip the ship. Hey, Barry, bang a blicky, medic. We got company. Hey, you okay? So much for a discreet landing. We're lucky we got away with just some bruises. Did you see Barry fall out of the shuttle? Hope he's not too far away. Anyways, scavengers are going to be back, and I hate to leave before Barry finds us, although I'm not sure how he'd even meet us with the bridges up. Our new friends raised them as they skittered away. They're smart to trap us here. We could swim off the island, but only if you want to grow a tail and gills and burn a few holes in your intestines. Right, okay. That's gross, so we'll stick to land. Uh, Blicky, you always were the best at field work. You want to look around for whatever powers the bridges? We're stuck here otherwise. I'll check out this building over here. See if I can hack into the radio channels around here. And if you see any of those things, take them out. We didn't escape the army to be fresh meat for the slave pits. 
All right, so you move around the game pretty much Diablo style. You just click and your character will move around. As of right now, we are armed with a pistol, is what it looks like to me. Yeah, it looks like we've got a pistol right here. We've got about 18 bullets to play around with, so that's good. We've got a note from Pelican. We can actually add that to our terminal. It'll add it to the map, and then you can go ahead and like read these notes. I'm going to skip on over them in the interest of brevity. Effectively, that note right there is just telling us, like, hey... We're gonna escape the army like we're we're deserting like we were all conscripts effectively into like a war that we didn't want to fight And so we're trying to run away now uh, Our gun has different attacks. So let's go through the UI real fast. We've got our health right here This is an indicator that lets you know if any specific body parts are wounded right here We can save or load our game. We've got our terminal which is effectively our map slash journal It looks like a map, but it's actually more of a journal on top of that You can also keep your own notes. This game is very much sort of old-school influenced uh, so you've got your own notepad right here where you can actually jot down pertinent details from quests and whatnot. And then we've got our inventory, which is nicely animated and rolls out and uses a cell system in order to store things. So I'll go ahead and move things around. I'm going to organize ever so slightly. I'm going to equip that frying pan real quick so that we can break open some of these crates. Uh, you attack just by right-clicking, so keep that in mind. Looks like we've got some medical stuff right there. I injured myself while swinging because we don't have any melee skills. But we did pick up two med kits right there. There's also a big knife over here. Is that knife in okay shape? Let's take a look at this. Yeah, let's take a look at this knife. Uh, no, that knife is basically just a hunk of sheet metal right now. It's in rough shape. Uh, there's a little radar thing down here. If you click on this, it turns on the radar. But I don't know if it actually, like, does anything. I fiddled around with it, but I didn't notice that it did anything. As you're moving around, you can interact with things. Sometimes it's not, like, abundantly clear what you can interact with. When you're inside terminals, you press the key that's indicated inside the parentheses. So these are going to be just, like, data logs and stuff like that. Uh, admin works for pretty much every single terminal in this first little area. So if you're interested in unlocking, like, data terminals and stuff like that, just put in admin. It, it works, like, every single time. We'll go ahead and print all these out real fast so that we're doing our due diligence with regards to the lore. Uh, but we're not going to, like, read it out or anything else like that for just now. That's just in case it becomes, like, useful for a quest later on or something that we get stuck on. Uh, down this way... We can find our teammate. She's working on the hacking thing. You can break the trash can. It'll give you, like, a trash can lid, although I haven't really derived what the trash can lid is good for. If you see these refrigerator things, they always have loot inside of them. So this one looks like it had a key of some kind is what it looks like to me. Yeah, we got a key. The Wolf's Bay key. A small metal key, although we don't actually know what it goes to. Although it looks like I can wear the key, I guess? Oh, I can, like, wear the key around my neck? I don't know if that actually affects anything or does anything useful, but, like, sure, why not? Uh, you do regenerate outside of combat if you take any damage and whatnot. There's something back behind right there, too, that we just looted. What was it? Uh, repair kits. Yeah, cool. And then we got some laser bullets right there, although we don't really have a laser gun to fire the laser bullets out of. I'm going to try and hold on to my ammo for as long as possible. I've... I've become, so I've played through a chunk of this game, and I've become kind of like an ammo miser. Like, I just, I hate running out of ammo, and I find that in the context of this game, I'm always running out of ammo in places where it feels like I might get pneumonia. Uh, we do have a little bit of burglary skills, so we can see if we can pop this door open right here. We did indeed pop the door open so that we can go straight through and we don't have to go around. I know what we're looking for here, and there's a rat inside this room, so you can see what the combat looks like. But we're kind of in the dark right now, so... Keep that in mind, too. There we go. I got the rat. I was trying to get the unit selection going because the rat was in front of the window right there. And so I had to find, like, a little thin sliver where I could click on the rat without clicking on the window. Because you can break windows and stuff in this game to, like, break into locations and, like, sneak through and whatnot. Oh, there's another squeaker over here. Oh, he dodged me. What a champion. Apparently we're fighting, like, the Muhammad Ali of rats. The guy knows how to move his head. What can I say? Uh, time only passes while you're moving around, so if you need to regenerate HP, just click around for a little bit. Hello, there's another rat in here. Uh, the game, interestingly, does not seem to use XP. I don't know what to think about that, so, like, killing these rats right here doesn't really matter for, like, the context of our adventure. It doesn't matter. We're not getting XP and we're not advancing our character from it. Instead, the way that you advance your character, it seems like you find basically like these nanite injectors around, sort of like 
God, what was another game that did that? Like, System Shock, I guess? Uh, you get, like, these nanite injectors, and with the nanite injectors, you can increase your stat blocks effectively. And so you kind of... It's a game that encourages you to explore, because if you don't, you're going to miss out on some of that fun stuff that's going to make your character better than they should be. Uh, maintenance. Bridge security reset in progress. Use admin for now. The code is LXWQZ. Okay. So this is to lower the bridges. So we've got admin, and then we've got LXWQZ. There we go. All good to go. I wasn't sure if it said Z or C. I have this problem where I start, like, second-guessing myself all the time, and that's why I mess things up. Like, I know the answer in my head, but then I'm like, was it a Z or a C or a P or a D? And then I just, I get all, I get all tangled up in the dog leash, man. It's something that I've suffered from my entire life. All right, so let's go ahead and we can break this vent right here. And if you go into the ventricle, there's actually a secret treasure room back here. We'll go ahead and see what we can grab. Uh, there is a knife. There was some money, and it looks like maybe some bullets. I mean, it's a 100% knife. I'll take that over a frying pan. I know that we're trying to do the tangled thing out here, and it's like frying pans, who knew, right? But, like, I just I feel like a giant machete blade is going to serve us a lot better than a frying pan in most applied combat situations. That's just how I feel about it. So now we've lowered the bridges. We've accomplished the task that our teammates asked us to accomplish. So we can move across the bridge. But just be forewarned, this is gang territory over here. So the guys you're going to come up against, they may take you out. I'm going to quick save real fast because I don't think the game auto saves on its own. Uh, I can check. But, like, I feel like I lost a lot of progress when I was testing the game out at some point. So I just started pressing the Q key all the time to, uh, to quick save whenever available. And we've got a door over here. It looks like there's bad guys in here. Uh, yeah, there's rats in here. Let's go ahead and get them. Three rats. There's another one right there. We're in, like, a little shady portion right now. So all we can see is, like, the outlines of things. But uh, it'll do for the moment. Looks like this is just kind of like a little back patio just in case you want to sit out there on a Saturday afternoon with a beer and just kind of like, you know, lackadaisically ponder the mutant river that's rolling underfoot and the various diseases and possible growths it might be giving you. Now let's continue off this way. Trench coat flapping in the breeze, as has been known to happen by protagonists everywhere. Hey, shiny coat. Three hand don't like you. His hands are looking for you. They showing around here now. Little fish in the docks. I saw them come in, I did. Boats in from the west. Mutants swimming after them. Three hands shot five. I saw it. Okay. Now, what you can do is any person in this game, you can interact with them and you can try to, like, charm them. I don't know. Hey, we charmed a person. Nice. So they're apparently on my team now. We've got, like, backup. Just in case we need somebody to sling a little bit of steel and make us a little bit, you know, a little bit more. Oh, this guy's got a big knife. Yeah, sure. That's not terrifying at all. Uh, it looks like we are... <clears throat> it looks like we are engaging, so I'm going to pull out my gun real fast. I'm going to reload. and I'm just going to see if I can help Gunter out. Oh, there's one behind me, too. Oh, it's a rat. Got Oh, Gunter's dead. Uh, we have officially shed a Gunter. And now we're running from a parade of rats. We're doing the we're doing the Pied Piper routine here. One rat down, two rats down. I just got to, like, pick these off one by one. The cool thing about this system is that you can dodge enemy attacks if you're, like, smart about it. There we go. Another one bites the dust. Let's go back and collect some loot. Uh, as far as I know, we fired about 10 bullets right there, which is unfortunate because now we're on our last 8 bullets, but I just didn't feel like with no melee skill. I felt like our character is sort of like remedial when it comes to, like, melee, and so I just, I had sort of this feeling that we weren't going to win a knife fight against three guys. Like, it just felt like kind of a tall order. Uh, the rats came out of this house right here. Is there anything in here? Looks like there's just an old dingy palette that I can't really interact with in any meaningful sense. Okay, let's go back. This I feel like that opens right there, but as of yet, fiddling around in this area, I haven't figured out a way to get it open. I can I can knife fight this guy. 
Yeah, like, I'll, I'll knife fight this guy. Like, one guy, absolutely. Like, I've had military training. I know what I'm doing. Like, you take the pointy and the slicey end and you stick it in the other guy. That's the, the basic idea behind it. Oh, there's a guy with a gun. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna get shot. I'd prefer not to get shot. Like, I feel like if I could find a way to not get shot, that would be sort of advantageous to me. There we go. Gun guy's down. We close the gap. That guy's going to take a swipe at me. Actually, I don't know what he's doing. He's just kind of like wandering around. Apparently, I cleaved both of them in twain like a Norse hero. So I'll take that. HP seems to be okay. I'm going to dodge that swing right there. Oof, we both just kind of wandered up and clubbed each other, huh? Fair enough, I survived. Are these green things that I'm picking up off the ground? They're called Wandoons. Uh, they're the money, the for the context of the game anyways. They are, they are the monies that we will be spending. Can I combine these stacks right here? Is that even, like, possible? It says that it's a magazine, so I guess not. Fair enough, I suppose. Uh, we did get another gun, though. It's at 49.5%, which makes it slightly better than our other gun. As far as I can tell, there's no way to, like, unload guns and, like, take bullets out of them to put into different guns of higher quality. Like, I do think that that's a feature that should probably be added. Like, when you right-click on it, there should be, like, unload ammo down here. So you can take the magazine out and just put it into a different gun. But as of yet, I haven't really figured out how to do that. Uh, we are looking for a way to get these bridges down. I'm gonna break some crates real fast, just in case there's any loose loot around. We're getting really lucky with our dice rolls right here. Normally, if you're a character that isn't specced into melee, uh, you injure yourself, like, a lot while you're cruising around just breaking crates and looking for loot. It doesn't look like there's anything inside this building right here. Yeah, it seems kind of empty. I know what's across that bridge over there, but there's like a little secrety secret area that I really, really wanted to show you guys. And I think it's behind this door right here. Uh, this game really sort of combines that idea from like the old System Shock games or the old Deus Ex games where like there's lots of nooks and crannies and there's lots of alternate paths to go from like point A to point B. Did I just get bit by a rat that was inside of a treasure chest? That's upsetting. That's just poor decorum. Don't do that. Like, who's over here shoving rats inside of a... Is there anything else I can loot? Who's over here shoving rats inside of a... Oh, we found a laser pistol, dude. We got, like, a little las pistol right there. I mean, I do have perceptional skills. So it seems to me like even though they are not our hallmark, I feel like our raw attributes might be able to make up for the fact that we don't have any proficiency in this weapon. Like, a gun's a gun, right? You put the bullets in it, you squeeze the trigger, the bullets come out of it, they hit things, they kill things that you don't want to be alive, thus the general premise of a firearm. Mm, looks like there's a door right there, but you gotta have like a specific angle on it to see it. Okay, a bunch of weird little buggy things, for sure. We're down in the sewers now. Uh, I have no clue what that thing is. Definitely reload the laser pistol. Whatever it is, it's called a jungle dog, and we have killed it. It has been slain. Another minor UX issue that I would point out with the game is your ammo should be displayed at all times, in my opinion. Uh, just sometimes it's hard to mentally keep track of how many bullets you have in your gun in between fights. And reloading in this game is kind of, like, weird in that, like, I haven't exactly figured out. So sometimes I'll reload, and it'll only, like, like add, like, one or two bullets to the gun. And I, I assume that's because it's swapping in partially filled magazines. But, like, it doesn't seem to prioritize loading the stuff. Oh. My, good, my gun is empty. Okay. It would seem to me that I have 11 bullets left. Why is it not letting me reload? Out of ammunition? No, I'm not. I'm definitely not out of ammunition. There's 11 bullets right there, sir. Oh, I can't interact with them. They are busted, so that's a bug. It won't let me slide them around the UI. That's upsetting. Don't like that in the slightest. Okay. Well, I guess we're knife-fighting a giant underground sewer ape, then. 
I was going to use the laser pistol to sort of like lean off of, now I'm worried it's going to happen with my other firearm. That's actually kind of like a major bug right there. Like that's going to be highly disruptive to the gameplay experience on any, I mean, hopefully they patch it before it comes out. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a minute and I'll like report it or something. Oh, that's a lot of jungle doggies. That is a serious quantity of jungle dogs. Ow, they hurt too. He's not dead, is he? Yeah, he's not even close to dead. Okay, so we're going to want to like kite these out a little bit. Ow. Okay, that didn't hurt as bad as I thought. We're okay. We're okay. We're still in this, dude. We're channeling, we're channeling, you know, pog energy. We're okay. Everything's fine. Those guys definitely a little bit stiffer than the human beings and the rats that we've been slaying with a knife up to this point. Okay, another one bites the dust. There's a door over here. I've managed to lockpick it, though. So there's another bridge on this side, and it looks like there's a terminal across. However, we did find a bunch of loot inside of here, which I am especially stoke arena would for. So let's see if we can grab some of these goodies down here. So it looked to me like... We just picked up a plasma charger. We picked up some more bullets. I'm curious if it'll load these. It looks like it did load that magazine. Possibly. So, like, I'm a little bit confused about what's happening here. Because, like, these bullets that we just picked up did not go into the gun. Like, they're still inside of our inventory. But these ones are super bugged. You see how I can click and move these? But if I click, try to click and move that one, it doesn't go anywhere. Are all my other bullets okay? Okay, now I'm I'm like worried about my inventory now, dude. I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit worried about what's going on here. Uh, sometimes moving through doors can be a little bit sticky. I would keep an eye on that too. I think that could definitely be iterated upon by the developers. Uh, sometimes with the isometry. And, like, the way the game functions, it just really does not seem to like it when you try to go through doors. There we go. Lasered his face off as he deserves. Uh, inside this little area. What are we looking at here? Uh, it looks like we're coming up in another little nook. Normally, I would just pistol whip and smack this thing. There's different attacks that you can do with different weapons. So with our knife, we can slash, we can throw it, or we can knock out the enemy effectively. With guns, you usually have, like, single fire, uh, usually a burst fire, auto, and then from there, uh, you have the ability to pistol whip people. Okay, so where did we come out at? Oh, that's a lot of bad guys. Nope, don't like that in the slightest. I'm going to see if I can pull this gunner back. Oh, he's being smart. I was trying to rush him. He saw me through the window, I think. Okay, so there's a lot of guys in that courtyard right there. Like, a lot, a lot of guys. Like, death quality guys. So, I don't think we should go through that way. Let's sneak on back and see if there's, like, anything that we potentially missed down in here. Just to make sure. I'm not I'm not trying to be overly paranoid. But, like, maybe, maybe there's, like, a rocket launcher. Or, like, a minigun. Or something of that caliber that's going to sway things in our favor. Although, I'm not seeing a lot of doors or anything else. I do like how the little critters squish when you step on them. It's a nice little feature. Somewhat gross. A little tiny bit gross, imagining having to take a, a stick and clean that out of the treads of my boots. But, at the same time, also a nice little detail. Okay, well, I guess there was really, like, nothing else down in there. I was a little bit concerned that, like, maybe I missed something. Oh, there's a guy with a knife. What's up, dude? Would you like to machete fight me? I've trained for this moment my whole life to machete fight a guy wearing dungarees in the middle of a cold and rainy pneumonia street. 
Are there any more guys around here to machete fight? Yeah, there's a guy right there. I machete fight you. Uh, you can target specific parts of the enemy's body, in case you were wondering about that. Uh, unfortunately, the game doesn't do like a fantastically amazing job at telling you exactly what the bonuses are for hitting various body parts. So I don't know what benefits you would get from hitting different body parts. It is entirely possible, this is my caveat, that that information was included in the tutorial. And I am inherently anti-tutorial. I'm the kind of person that just likes to throw myself into a game and fail at it over and over again until I figure it out the hard way. That's how I find video games to be fun. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it's how I live my life, you know? I, I like to live on an edge. And so anyways, that that's how I do it. So it's possible that, like, it was explained in the tutorial, but I just kind of missed out on it. I'm gonna knife fight this guy. I don't think I need to gunfight him. Yeah, exactly. You see how well I put him down right there? Like, that was pretty solid. Like, I would say breaking out the gun would become necessary... Possibly in a situation where they also have guns. Yeah, exactly. That was like functionally perfect right there That was exactly what I was going for. Uh, I highly recommend we we kill the guys with the guns first that Seems like something that someone with wisdom would do I don't know if I killed that guy right there But there are a lot of knife wielding psychos behind me so you can take that as a consolation prize. Unfortunately, my gun appears to shoot like fruity pebbles or something because we do not appear to be getting the kill. How much bullet do I have left? Not much bullet, all things considered. Uh, very, very little bullet. I hit that guy in the face on accident instead of the guy with the gun who I wanted to hit. Uh, I believe we're going to die horribly here, so I'm going to use a med kit. Oh, I'm dead. I died horribly. All right, so it took me a minute, and we have verified that the game does not autosave, so I had to replay through all that stuff. But I did pick up a couple of people that are on my team now. Uh, if you see any people on, like, a random street, you can make a charm roll on them, and they'll just, like, join your party as, like, little, I don't know, like, syndicate-style minions that'll just follow you around and help you in fights and stuff. So maybe this will give us the extra fortification we need in order to, like, you know, maybe draw some of the heat off of me over here. I'm gonna go ahead and whip out the gun one more time and see what we can accomplish. I don't know if I'm, like, reloaded right now. I sort of hope that I'm reloaded, but there's no way to tell. I'm just going to spray bullets wildly at anybody that I possibly can. There we go. Uh, this guy was hit in the face with a bullet, and it gave him a good night's sleep. So that's all you need to know about that right there. Uh, that's a tough guy right there, where he gets hit in the face with a bullet, and he's like, I'll take a nap. I'll sleep it off. Oh, there's another guy with a gun. That sucks. I didn't realize there was another gunman over here. Yeah, just reload the gun real fast. There we go. That'll fix it. Can I interest you in being shot in the face? Thank you. Uh, I believe that one of our teammates is dead, but the good news here is that we have mashed our way through the enemy blockade by the sheer force of our violence. So that's really, really nice. I would like that money. I would like those bullets. I would like all those things. Uh, one thing that I do think the game is missing is, like, contextual cues. So, like, when I pick up money, there's no, like, cha-ching sound. There's no, like, the sound of rolling coins. There's nothing like that. When you pick up a knife, there's not the sound of, like, metal sliding across concrete or anything like that. Uh, those are all things that I would recommend adding. Because RPGs really thrive sort of on the idea of ambience and on the idea of like context and on you know immersion and i think that losing that due to not having kind of sound cues and ux feedback is a bad idea uh, so anyways i would recommend that they get that all in like when you pick up laser bullets it should be like you know it should make like a little noise when you pick up normal bullets it should be like you know like little things like that oh i have a key no matching keys okay never mind i'll pick the lock like a brigand because that's what i want to do here Oh. Who's there? It's me, knife-wielding psychopath. I don't have any matching keys for this one either, unfortunately. Wish that I had matching keys. Alas, I have not matching keys. However, it looks like we found the gang's super awesome mega treasure room. So we'll take a look around and see if we can find anything fun inside of here. Uh, I believe I just spied with my little eye some armor, 
the ration made a noise when I picked it up, so that's good. It just looks like everything in the game. Oh, more bullets and also a gun. Is it a better gun than the gun that I currently have? It's at 50%. It's something. I'm going to put on this body armor right here. Yeah, let's rock that body armor real quick. Do I need to open this? I'll open it. Why not? That's a big door, though. Like, that's a sizable door. Apparently, I'm just a burglary god out here. Okay. Okay. I see, uh, I see little scan lines inside this building right here. So I believe there may be yet a victim to claim. Uh, he looks different than the other ones. I feel like we lock it, and we load it, and we pop it, and we drop it. And we do all that fun. I got, like, one bullet left. Oh, but, dude, my home... Yeah, my homeboy came through and cracked him in the back of the head, dude. He waited for an opening. He waited for an opening. Like, he knew that he wasn't strong enough for that fight proper, so he waited. He waited till I had him distracted like the tank that I am. Came in and clocked him in the back of the head. I like it. What's up with this terminal right here? Admin? Yay! Admin. The secret to all things. Uh, let's see here. It looks like it is a purchase order for Three Hand Harry. He got a grade B enhancement syringe. It looks like he got a Quinton plasma rifle and a thousand rounds. And it's in the Factus South Warehouse 18, locker number 15. The passcode is 8314. Okay. It sounds like we've got to line up on some heavy ordnance here. What, what, what is this thing right here? Can I have it? I can has. Oh, inventory full. I cannot has. So gear in this game is modifiable. If you see those little circuits, those little circles on it, those are slots basically uh, where you can slot things in. In case you were wondering how that functions. What is that right there? A training chip. Sure. I'll use it. Oh, okay. I see what's up. Yeah, give me give me plus one right there. So apparently I've got a three score in slug guns now. You know, in retrospect, I feel like maybe I could have tried to apply that to an attribute and seen if it worked for an attribute, but I feel like we're past that juncture now. I think it's too late. I mean, you can reload if you want. I'm going to pistol whip some stuff down here. Yeah, more bullets for sure. I like the bullets. This guy is kind of like, I don't know what's up with this gang, but they're kind of living the dream right now, dude. They've got money laying around on the floor, so I assume they can't be doing that poorly within the confines of the game world. Like, I don't have warehouses full of crates of money. If I did, you know, that'd be a change in circumstance that I wasn't aware of. Uh, it looks like we got a utility room note. Let's see here. So access code for Old Town Utility Terminal located in North Street Utility Building is XKLF Dub. Okay. So we got to find a utility room and we got to punch that in. Maybe that'll lower the gate that's down underneath in that place that we were. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But anyways, this is Mecha Jammer. Uh, it's kind of a non-verbose RPG. I don't know if the dialogue picks up a little bit later. But anyways, the things that I have noticed, just in case you're pondering a purchase, and these are all easy patches, I think. I think I talked about the user experience, and I think I talked about the sound effects, and I talked about other things, but they're definitely going to want to fix that ammo problem that we ran into. If they're even... I mean, it, it, we had bullets in our inventory that we couldn't move or use or do anything with, and it was saying that I couldn't reload, and so I assume that that's kind of like a bug right there. I really, really like the graphical presentation. I think the game is pretty cool. The combat system makes sense, but it's really hard to describe to anybody. You kind of have to play it, and it's almost got, like, a feel to it. It's like a tactile combat system, not a combat system you can really sort of 
relay in words. Uh, but like, if you get it across, it's pretty cool. I really like the sandboxy idea of sort of syndicate style recruiting people you meet on the street with charm checks until so you have like a big army of guys behind you that you can just kind of send into the fray. You can press the number keys in order to command them directly to go attack this guy at this spot or move over to here, so on and so forth. Uh, but anyways, definitely going to want to get that bug fixed up and then moving through doors you get stuck pretty frequently and it got me killed once or twice while I was playing around with the game is that sometimes the clicking isometry just doesn't like it when you move through a door it can't like decide what side you're clicking on or whether you're clicking on like the roof or something and like you kind of get stuck at the transom of the entry and so anyways it can be kind of like a little bit obnoxious from time to time but those are really the only two things that i noticed my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block we had mecha jammer tomorrow we will very likely have something else thanks for hanging out and that's all i got for you bye everybody